Right, ladies and gentlemen, for the next session, Women in Technology, Fostering Interests and Overcoming Obstacles, we have uh, Ms. Shaha Shalab, the Chairman of High Tech Nofal of Arab Republic of Egypt, and also Dr. Tali Withney, President and Chief Executive Officer of Anita Bok Institute for Women in Technology, the United States of America. And to moderate this session is General Bagadatuk Nuriza Haji Abdul Hamid, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of PLUS Malaysia Berhad. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to invite the moderator and the speakers to take their seats on stage. Right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please uh, settle down as I hand over the floor to the moderator, Yang Bagadato Noriza Silicon. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Rahmatullahi ta'ala barakatuh. Um, it's indeed a great honor to be given this opportunity to moderate the session with another two great speakers in a such distinguished crowd. And my sincere thanks to the organizers for this opportunity. However, I have to apologize for my sexy voice. <laughs> my friends were asking me, how come? What happened to my voice? So I told them, I was the backup singer for J-Lo concert. <laughs> no, it's just a joke. Anyway, um, today's businesses are growing and experiencing rapid change due to many factors such as technology and globalization. And of course, diversity is an important part of this change. And of course, when we, talk about uh, when we talk about diversity, it encompasses not just gender, but also race, ethnicity, age, religious belief, etc. And we may need the whole day to, liberate, to deliberate on this issue. And in the interest of time and with the limit, uh, we, will dis we will limit the discussion to the role of women in technology. As many of you no, many studies on gender diversity show that there is actually a positive correlation between women representation on boards and senior management and company results such as revenue growth, increase in return on equity, etc. And this has resulted in government of many countries putting up plans and action to institute change in the public and private sectors. But the issue that we would like to deliberate today is about the role of women in technology. Is there a similar correlation? And if so, how do we ensure that we continue to foster the interest in technology amongst women and assist them in overcoming the challenges ahead? In addressing this, I believe our speakers today will also deliberate on the opportunities for women entrepreneurs in technology sector, obstacles and, and challenges to encourage more women entrepreneurs to venture in technology sector, the impact on technology on women and, and, and engendering of policies to promote female interest in technology sector and also its trends uh, and issue. And together, uh, to discuss with uh, this topic today, we have of course two renowned speakers that have come from afar to share their thoughts. We have on my left, Ms. Saha Saha. She herself is also as prominent as the earlier speakers. She has been listed as one of the 100 most powerful women in, most powerful Arab women in 2011. I'm told that she has been a banker all her life, but um, she has recently joined her family uh, business. And uh, since then, she had grown her passion in technology. So I think we'll hear more from her uh, uh, experiences about, about her passion and also how she can garner the interests of women in technology and grow them, and as, uh, grow them as entrepreneurs. Next is Dr. Tally Whitney. She is the president and CEO of Anita Bok Institute for Women and Technology. 
Women and Technology. And uh, this uh, institute is actually uh, an NGO that seeks to increase the impact of women on all aspects of technology and increase the positive impact of technology on world's women. So um, I think we can uh, hear more from uh, these uh, two remarkable uh, speakers. And uh, since uh, we are actually uh, short of time for this session, I would not want to waste uh, further time. I would want to invite our first speaker, Ms. Saha, to, uh, give, to give a presentation. Ms. Saha, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I come from Egypt, and I'm very glad and happy to come to Malaysia and talk to all the women and men uh, uh, about uh, my experience and in technology, especially. Uh, technology is the second phase of my life in my career. I actually started as a, a banker, and I was one of the very few bankers, actually the only woman heading the largest bank in Egypt and the only woman heading the uh, second largest investment bank in the region. Uh, I, I worked in millions of portfolios and today I have another phase of my life. I am looking at life with a digital lens and this is what you all should share with me today. Uh, uh, the, the, the attraction came to me when Google asked me to be an advisor for uh, 75 uh, companies that they're choosing for the United States to, to go into the industry and within this uh, uh, part of, of, of the seven months, I, I got a lot of passion into technology and although I was chairing my family business in technology, I didn't know how important it is for women to be there and looking at life in a different manner. You do not need to be an engineer to go into t technology. You do not need to be a, a, a scientist to go into science business, but you need to be a leader, and you need to understand that life is open for you. I just want to read a quotation which will start uh, uh, for me on uh, the technology side of business. Don't let others discourage you or tell you that you can't do it. In my day, I was told women didn't go into chemistry. I saw no reason why we couldn't. Those were the words of Gertrude Bell. She won the Nobel Prize in medicine in 1988. And therefore, wanting to engage more women to work in technology is not about a sense of enti entitlement for feminists or for uh, getting uh, the same uh, ecology with women, uh, with men. It is about a moral obligation, or often uh, uh, it's, it's modern, to be modern. Uh, it is about women themselves wanting to engage more on technology, creating opportunities in different fields, in, in a lot of uh, technology-related companies, in entrepreneurship, in, in look at us today, in the Arab world, after the spring uh, 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 revolutions have happened, we're all into internet, we're all into Facebook, but this is only a way to go into your own business, in your dot-coms, in your own little entrepreneurship. I created my own uh, uh, angel fund uh, lately for the past year, and I'm investing in a lot of small companies related to technology. I I'm with them on the board, but in the same time, I look at the financial s sector, but I look at their winning. One of the companies that I chose has won the second largest prize in the Harvard Business School, and it is all headed by five Egyptian young women who have gone into this field in the United States. Therefore, technology is not just being engineers. Technology is looking at opportunities with different levels and with different fields. I, I will just put a slide that I have added from my own company. It is this way. Yes, and the slide says a question to all of you. Why aren't there more women in technology in Egypt and, and in other fields. In the universities, 40% of science and technology are women. By the time they reach leadership, we only have five women who head technology areas in Egypt. Why is that? What's happening? What's the wrong 
perception on Egyptian women or on women in the Middle East. We should lead companies and reach to the solution. We need to have role models. We need to have ideas. We need to come out to the market through the media and through a different vision that what are we doing in the market? Are we just religious? Should we go to university and then go home? Should we go into a different subject uh, or, or fields and, and create leadership? Should we have role models? Should we, what is the solution for women to continue being leaders in different fields, science, engineering, and technology? I, I actually, uh, yesterday, talking to, uh, uh, to Dr. Willy and many others, I found out that training and coming into a, a technological field, leading it is very important. You need to get trained, you need to understand it, and you need to know that the field is not difficult. Actually, it is very easy to lead a hundred of engineers under you, whether they're men or women, but it is important to have a strategy, to have a mission, to have a vision, to have an outlook, and lead it in your own way in the market. How much time do I have? Um, I think you can have a few, a few more minutes. Okay. Now, what I, I, I also want to share with you is that women are visionary, but in different manner. They seek the input of their teams, and they work very well in teamwork. They describe very well the output to the group, and so if you really had a technology company, you can very easily deduce operations in the manner and had the, the uh, importance of your strategy. The rise of women must go beyond a merely symbolic makeover, but you should be distinguished, get a position, and get a leadership in the market. Now, if you are a woman engineer or if you are a woman leader, you can build teams and build concepts, uh, achieve uh, alignment, negotiation and management, design the plan, evaluate, deploy, communicate, make a marketing plan, but that's all in a mental map, a mental map that women can really lead and can do. My example and my words to you is that during your phase in, in your career and in your leadership, you can always change uh, the method of your leadership from uh, a finance company to a technology company, maybe to a marketing company. You can have different hands in many successful institutions if you really want to, because women are born to juggle different kinds of situations, women are there to juggle different kinds of, of, uh, of lead work in the situation. I'm a mother, I'm an entrepreneur, uh, and I also lead a lot of CSRs and NGOs in the Egyptian market, and I can do it all happily, provided that I put a map every day on what I should do and what I should succeed. Today I'm in technology, Everybody thinks it's difficult. I'm actually doing one of the largest joint ventures with China on technology networking and cable networking in Egypt. And, and uh, uh, being a woman there and being a finance uh, experienced woman, it was very easy for me to go ahead and describe another phase in my life and start a new technology uh, company. Thank you. There you go, um, and another successful uh, story. Uh, Ms. Ha, um, you did say in your presentation earlier that um, in Egypt, and especially so in the, uh, some of the Muslim countries, there's a wrong religious perception, yeah? Um, maybe you can clarify that further? Uh, I wanted to focus in the first minutes on talking on technology, but it was very difficult for me to detach myself on what's happening in my country. In Egypt, we, have, uh, we are now in, in, in different corners. Uh, we do not know what will happen to women. We actually have women uh, uh, as leaders in all the community, but we don't have women at all in politics. Women were put aside in the last 
uh, political uh, elections, women were put aside uh, in, in uh, the last uh, ministries, although we always had ministers, women were put aside in all the government organizations, although we had top heads in petrochemicals, in oil and gas, and everywhere. I'm not very sure the perception of women and uh, in our country, what will happen? W what will the leaders do with us, the educated and the leaders? What will happen in the future of Egypt? I hope that the perception that although we are uh, uh, Egyptian women very active, that the interpretation of the Quran and the interpretation of the Muslim woman in Egypt is to put the one woman back to their homes and only work as assistants, secretarials, or on junior positions. I hope it will not happen. We are struggling very much in Egypt. And I, when I put this little slide, I, I wanted to attach myself back to what's happening in my country now, which is a lot of changes. We are going to struggle. We are going to move ahead as a lot of Egyptian women in the streets, in the work field, to prove to the world that we are still there. It is true we are Muslims, but we do not have to stay at home. There is a misconception in the new government that is coming to lead our country. We will discuss that in different questions if we have more time, but I wanted just to focus on technology, uh, although I didn't want to involve you in the problems that we have today, especially in Egypt. Thank you, Ms. Hal. We wish you all the best, and I hope, and we certainly hope there's going to be a change of landscape uh, in Egypt. Inshallah. And um, next, maybe I can call on Dr. Tali. Um, as I said just now, she is actually of, um, the, the key person who's behind uh, the organization that is supporting women and in technology. So uh, probably uh, she can inspire us, uh, especially those who intend to uh, go into technology and Maybe you may have thought that technology is something, a big word, which you are afraid to venture in. Maybe we can uh, listen uh, to um, Dr. Tally and she can inspire us more. Dr. Tally, the floor is yours. Thank you. It's really an honor and a pleasure to be attending this. I've learned a lot over the last couple of days. Um, are my slides um, So I'm a computer scientist. And um, my story is actually common for many women um, in that when I was in high school, which is the, the school right before college where I grew up, I was very good at math and I decided not to take it anymore. I did not seek the advice, nor did anybody tell me why this was a particularly bad idea. When I got to undergraduate, what my, the college where I attended, I had no clue about what I wanted to study and I almost dropped out. I was very blessed because I discovered computer scientist, science. I took a class and for me, this was a long time ago, um, I found my passion. I have worked in Silicon Valley. I've been part of two startup companies that have been quite successful. And like a speaker said earlier, you never know how your path is going to end up. Ten years ago, I had left a startup company that had been bought. By, it was a chip company. I was VP of engineering. And my very close friend, Anita Borg, had founded the Institute for Women in Technology. She was diagnosed with brain cancer. And the organization was in serious trouble. So I decided reluctantly to take the helm for a couple of months and that was 10 years ago. I have the chance to work with thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of women who are passionate about creating the technology that is going to affect all of our lives. And I will tell you that we, um, can I go back to the one slide before? I'm sorry, That's who's that, the first slide? Okay, um, so technology is part of our lives. You may not consider yourself a technologist, but the, 
the future of technology is going to impact every aspect of what you do. And what I'm here to tell you is that you can be part of that revolution. Yes, I'm a computer scientist, but you can learn more about technology, be it take a class, Find, you know, take the time to understand what's going on with your computer. But some of the trends that, we'll, that I see is very exciting as we move forward is you certainly know what a smartphone is, but it is becoming your way to talk to the rest of the world. There, it will be a sensor. You will be able to control your TV. Um, everything that you do will, will happen through this, this um, small Smartphone. It will become the platform of the next of the next 20 years. The other thing that I find that's really exciting is what um, is Moore's law, which is that chips themselves will continue to shrink. Um, chip the chip design was really my background, and um, and the the small chips are what drive the smartphones, the iPads, the computers that you use today. But as these shrink, these tiny chips will be on your clothes. They will be part. They will be part of your refrigerator. They will talk to each other. There's just a lot of excite, exciting possibilities in terms of the, this technology as it scales. Computer science and engineering is part of many trends, including environmental, medical. You'll hear more about nanotechnology this afternoon. These are. There's just so much interesting work that needs to happen. And we need women as part of this. Why do we need women? What's the reason why it is important to me and to, to the world that women are part of this new future? Just think about it. Look around the room. There are 50% of the population that are women. And we're really smart. We have great ideas. So imagine a world that is not building on the, that power, of those ideas of all the women. So any technology innovation that doesn't leash the power of the entire population, to me, that's sad. So I believe that women are an important part of the future. So the question is, um, how, how do you get more women to be entrepreneurs? How do you help them? And um, there are three programs that I wanted to mention briefly that I have been part of and where we have seen success. The first is a program developed by the, Depart the US Department of State um, called Tech Women that brought 40 technical women from the Middle East, the, the MENA region, and to Silicon Valley for a, mentor, uh, for a mentoring program. They worked with mid-career technical women in Silicon Valley. They, so they had the chance to really to, to talk to people who were working in an entrepreneurial fashion and then take that back to their country. So the, the important part of the, the tech women program is this aspect of being mentored finding somebody who has what you want and learning from them. The second part that we've, that we've been involved with is that my organization, the Anita Borg Institute, has a lot of awards and scholarships that bring women from around the world to our annual conference called the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing. And once again, as you are, as the people who come there are, um, embark on their journey, they have the chance to talk to all these other smart people. In my world, most of the women I know work with in, in organizations that are about between 10 and 20% women. So mostly it's men, and the chance to come to, to spend time with 3,600 women who are technical is just a, it's a life-changing experience. And they ha then have that chance to take that back. The last is, um, in India, we have a, an annual India conference. I, I'm on my way, it's next week in Bangalore, India. And for the last two years, we've had something called a Women's Entrepreneurial Quest, where, where um, entrepreneurs come and pitch in front of the thousand women who are in the room. It's, it's very exciting. The award is that they then have mentoring 
from a company that, that helps mentor in India, that helps mentor women entrepreneurs. And so those are three examples of programs that I have seen that have had significant impact on increasing the number of women entrepreneurs. Thank you. Thank you, um, Dr. Tali. Um, okay, um, I think um, we understand that the programs that you mentioned just now are actually mainly the program that's being uh, run by your institute and in support of the uh, women and technology. But uh, realizing that science and technology and innovation is an important component of the economic development of any country, especially developing country, as um, an NGO that supports the uh, women in technology, what do you recommend for uh, a government, especially that from a developing nation, to do this, uh, to promote um, uh, and support women uh, in technology? Well, thank you. If you look at what potential entrepreneurs need, there's really two things that are most critical. Access to mentors. So uh, a number of the programs that I meant, uh, mentioned allowed people who were starting out. Uh, often women don't have the confidence in themselves, so having the chance to talk to successful entrepreneurs is, um, is really important to their success. So certainly a government can support that kind of mentoring programs, perhaps in co cooperation with other governments. The second is access to capital. If you look at entrepreneurial uh, successes, at some point, you always need to have some money in order to grow the business. And so being able for the government to provide some sort of funding model that invests in people, but actually will make money in the long run for the investing organization is actually is something else that I think a government can help to provide or facilitate. Okay, uh, thank you. <clears throat> um, I would like to give uh, some time to the audience uh, to participate in this discussion. But uh, before that, uh, I think um, I would just like to comment uh, or make some uh, additional remarks in, uh, based on uh, both um, uh, what both uh, speakers have spoken about. Um, I think we all uh, know and it, as a trend in most of the countries is that we see that as far as the um, participation of women in tertiary education and their success uh, in the university. We can see that more and more women are more successful in the universities. Um, and, and when they go into the career, what happened is that uh, it's called a leakage. Somehow or somewhere, they, uh, there's a leakage uh, uh, along the way. And as a result of that, when you look at the higher uh, level positions, it's mainly uh, held by men. So this is something that we need to address uh, as well. Uh, would any one of you want to comment on that? Uh, de definitely, the leakage is everywhere in the world uh, in, in, in all aspects. Women get very excited before they get married. When they get married, they put priorities. But also the, the mentoring in the society, the mentoring and the challenges that we should uh, 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 help one another in, in, in each country in all around the world, women do not continue the success story. They start when they are young in the university. Women don't continue the success story when they start at the beginning of their career. So by, by osmosis, something happens. Where are they? they? We need them. They are a big percent of the community. Imagine if, if the growth rate in the economy is, 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 is dealt with 80% of the community, not only 30% that are men and 5% that are women. Imagine what our communities would look like and different. I think mentoring, the media, the, the, the government role is very important. Our role in the private sector in really educating women to come in and, and uh, advocate them to become leaders, it's very important. While I headed the bank, Actually, I started with 14% were women. By the time I left the bank, uh, over 34% were women. But it's not that. In the leadership, 28 general manager 
were, were leading the bank and 60% of them were women. So it's very important to see that women should be on the board of directors, women should be in the leadership, women should be as CEOs, women should be as entrepreneurs, and there's nothing wrong while trying to lead an institution or to create an institution that you lead or to become part of the decision makers in the growth in the companies that you are leading. I agree, we need to do a solution for that and that is mentoring and becoming role players. This is where we are today. Okay, uh, so thank you so much. I'm sorry. So no, thank you so much for asking that. that. That question is at the heart of what the institute that I run is about. We work with organizations to recruit, retain, and advance technical women. And I'm here to tell you that it varies a lot from places. There are places that actually have a lot of women at all levels. Um, one example of the ways in which we work with companies is what you measure, you will change. So companies, we have an award where you actually measure how many women you have at each level within your organization. Um, but there are well-known ways to be able to retain and advance your women. And um, I think that it's really a commitment overall to make that change. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tali. Um, the organizers are actually signaling to me that we are uh, up for time. But I think I should allow at least one question from the audience. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, I am now wearing my other hat as the chair for science and technology cluster of the African Union ECOSOC. And for us as women, science and technology is very important to be scientists and in, in the field of technology, but also how can we help other women by our expertise. So I just share with you one story in Africa that we are doing. We in the National Research Center of Egypt, we developed solar dryers for women in the grassroots. So they are now using it to dry fruits and vegetables. So it's very, very simple technology that we use to help other women, uh, small entrepreneurs. So it's really actually an appeal for us as scientists not to look only at ourselves, but how can our science help others that are not privileged and educated as us, but can help us for economic independence. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Um, we heard from both uh, speakers. I think we talked about mentoring. It's important for us to be able to mentor each other. And today we heard great speakers with great experience. And I think uh, we can use them as our mentors as well. And we also talked about access to capital in order for the women to success, uh, to succeed. And um, as what Ms. Saha had said, yeah, she had actually yeah. established angel funds that has actually proven uh, to to, to be able to assist women to succeed in technology and, and yet she can still make a good investment out of it. So I think this is somewhere something that we can all do together. We can support each other as women so that women, we can be out there and, and uh, represent the uh, population uh, as how we are actually represented. As we said, uh, there's more than 50% women population, but that's, uh, when, when you talk about uh, the success or uh, the representation in senior uh, leadership position, we, are, we have not achieved uh, that uh, target yet. Somebody from the audience just now asked about goals here. Yeah? And I think it's good if we can uh, get some goals to, to be, um, uh, you know, uh, we state some goals so that we can strive to achieve. As far as Malaysian government, there is actually a goal that is actually uh, being uh, try, uh, the government is trying to strive where the government wants to achieve at least 30% of the uh, board uh, position to be represented by women by 2016. And uh, I think um, similarly, other countries would also uh, strive to do the same. And when we talk about all this, I think uh, we there's always a challenge uh, to this change. Um, and with that, I would like to share with you a quote by Martin Luther King Jr., where he said that our very survival depends on our ability to stay awake, to adjust to new ideas, to remain vigilant, and to face the challenge of change. But what we must remember, where there is challenge, there is opportunity. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, with that, uh, we'd like to um, invite the speakers as well as the chairperson to step forward for a group photograph for the record.